Hello and welcome to Haunted Montreal's Spooky Story Sessions. I'm your host, Holly Rhiannon, and today I'm going to tell you all about Raven's Crag. Welcome, welcome, spooky specimens. We are back from break and ready to share new spooky tales with all of you. Did you miss us? With over 200 documented ghost stories, Montreal is easily the most haunted city in Canada, if not all of North America. Haunted Montreal is dedicated to researching these paranormal tales, and our channel brings you videos in both French and English every Saturday. Today's episode examines Raven's Crag, one of the world's most frightening house of horrors. Perched on the slopes of Mount Royal, it is the location of deranged brainwashing experiments during the Cold War and may host a secret child cemetery. But before we get into today's episode, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time we've got a new story to share. And hey, if you're already subscribed, a big thank you and welcome back. We're so happy to have you. Now without further ado, let's get spooky. Raven's Crag is a prominent Pine Avenue mansion that is currently used by McGill's Psychiatry Department. Now known as the Allen Memorial Institute, it is a very creepy estate and is also rumored to be extremely haunted. Tortured, disembodied voices echo the corridors, and not only do caretakers often refuse to clean the terrifying morgues in the building, but sometimes at night a mysterious light appears in the cupola of the main tower overlooking the McGill campus. According to a report in the McGill Tribune, the upper buildings of the McGill campus above Dr. Penfield appear to be the most ghost-ridden of them all, especially the Allen Memorial Institute. In the 1950s and 60s, the MK Ultra experiments partially funded by the CIA subjected patients to electroshock therapy, sensory deprivation, and lobotomies. Experiments also forced patients to listen to broadcasted messages either from loudspeakers or from under their pillows, as well as given them experimental hallucinogenic drugs. Any ghosts trapped in this building will be forever reminded of their tortured pasts. There are also rumors that a secret haunted children's cemetery exists behind the property just behind the stone wall. It is at the bottom of a slope that leads up to the Olmstead Road on Mount Royal. This rocky, forested area is popular with psychics and paranormal investigators, and often mysterious people can be seen there at night conducting strange rituals, often involving votive candles. It is said that investigators sometimes hear disembodied children crying. Survivors of horrific brainwashing experiments claim that child victims were secretly buried at this location out of sight of the public. Given the creepy rumors, mental health patients are often apprehensive about being treated at the Allen Memorial Institute, and for good reason given its deranged history. Raven's Crag was built in 1863 by Sir Hugh Allen. An extremely affluent banker and entrepreneur of Scottish origin, Allen used his political connections to obtain favorable contacts and subsidies for his enterprises and was known to exploit workers, including children, in his factories. In 1860, Sir Hugh Allen purchased 14 acres on the slopes of Mount Royal for $10,000 from the estate of the late Simon McTavish. Built in the style of an Italian Renaissance villa or palazzo, Raven's Crag consisted of 72 lavish rooms spread over five floors and decorated in the opulent Victorian fashion of the era. The mansion also featured an imposing tower with an observatory in the cupola, which Sir Hugh Allen used to monitor his ships with a telescope in the old port of Montreal. When built, Raven's Crag was also fitted with gas lighting and the most advanced plumbing and heating technology available at the time. It was the most lavish address in the city and hosted decadent parties for some of the most prestigious and wealthy of people, including members of the royal family. When Sir Hugh Allen died in 1882 while visiting his son-in-law in Edinburgh, he was one of the richest men in the world, with a fortune estimated to be between 8 and 12 million pounds. His son, Montague, inherited the regal Raven's Crag mansion. Following Montague's death in 1940, his wife donated it to McGill University. Raven's Crag was gutted of its lavish interior and transformed into a psychiatric hospital called the Allen Memorial Institute. With funds from the Rockefeller Foundation, Dr. Ewan Cameron, the founder of McGill's psychiatric department, was appointed its director. 
In the early 1950s, during the first decade of the Cold War, the CIA believed it was crucial to learn how to brainwash people, after the apparent success of the Chinese during the Korean War. A handful of American POWs made inexplicable confessions while publicly praising communism and denouncing the United States. Starting in 1950, the CIA reached out to psychologists, physicians, and toxicologists and embarked on several mind control projects such as Project Bluebird, Project Artichoke, and Project MKUltra. In 1957, the CIA managed to recruit Dr. Ewan Cameron, who was trying to discover whether doctors could erase a person's mind and instill new patterns of behavior. The purpose of his brainwashing experiment was to discover techniques that could destroy a person's time-space continuum in order to reprogram them. Dr. Cameron and his colleague Dr. Hebb started the experiment with 22 paid student volunteers. Each student was placed on a bed in a lighted cubicle and made to wear opaque goggles, cardboard handcuffs, and lie with their head embedded into a U-shaped foam pillow that limited audio stimulation. Most subjects quit after a few hours, complaining that being in the apparatus felt like a form of torture. Most also had experienced hallucinations similar to those had on drugs like LSD. Dr. Hebb concluded that even short-term sensory deprivation produced a devastating impact on the human psyche, noting that the subject's very identity began to disintegrate. Realizing the potential, Dr. Cameron moved the research trial to phase two, which would require subjects who could not leave, as the student volunteers had done. Dr. Cameron began handpicking patients at the Allen Memorial Institute for participation in the brainwashing research against their knowledge. For subjects, Dr. Cameron chose people suffering from minor mental and emotional problems such as anxiety disorders or postpartum depression. Dr. Cameron developed and tested three major psychiatric procedures on the mental patients at the Allen Memorial. He started with the technique of depatterning, his theory that people's pattern of behavior could be erased and replaced with others. In an attempt to erase their memories and personality, Dr. Cameron subjected them to brutal electroshock sessions that were well beyond the norm in psychiatric hospitals in terms of frequency, duration, and voltage. His second technique was called sensory isolation and involved putting subjects in a sealed box where they could receive the minimum sensorial stimulus possible. Their eyes and ears would be covered, their body would be padded, and their movement impeded. It induced a form of sleep deprivation and disintegration of their personality. Dr. Cameron then used his third technique, an attempted reprogramming known as psychic driving. Using powerful drugs, he would put patients through 15 to 30 days of drug-induced, almost uninterrupted sleep. His patients were forced to listen to pre-recorded messages on a loop for as many as 16 hours a day, designed to implant the desired new personality in the patient's psyche. Dr. Cameron was largely successful in erasing the identity of his patients, but was unable to implant the desired new personalities. Many of them suffered permanent brain damage. I wonder why. A study commissioned by Dr. Cameron's successor in 1967 found that many of the tested patients suffered permanent amnesia, incontinence, forgetting how to talk, forgetting their parents, and even thinking their interrogators were their parents. The CIA was so impressed with Dr. Cameron's work that these techniques became the core of its torture methodology and were used in Vietnam and most recently in Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq and at Guantanamo Bay. Most of Dr. Cameron's unconsenting human guinea pigs did not discover what had really been done to them until more than 20 years later, which made it very difficult to obtain compensation. A few of Cameron's over 300 former patients did file lawsuits, but they were originally obstructed by the Canadian government, which had also contributed to the financing of Cameron's experiments. The reason Dr. Cameron was able to carry out such cruel experiments for almost a decade could be explained by the prestige that he enjoyed as a doctor. He was one of North America's most eminent psychiatrists. He had served in the medical tribunal at the Nuremberg trials and had been the president of the Quebec, Canadian, American, and World Psychiatric Associations. Following his cruel and deranged career, Cameron died of a heart attack while mountain climbing with his son on September 8, 1967. 
Today, despite its horrid past, the Allen Memorial Institute continues to operate as a psychiatric facility and houses ambulatory or outpatient services. The inpatient services were amalgamated into the facilities at the Montreal General Hospital in 2015. Essentially, the Allen Memorial Institute now only offers outpatient psychiatric and psychological services, including cognitive behavioral therapy, as well as day clinics, programs, and administrative services. Thankfully, there are no longer any beds at the Allen. One survivor of Ewan Cameron's experiments named Anne Diamond suggests that there are unmarked graves in the forested area behind the Allen Memorial Institute. She wrote, These unmarked graves are a big secret. There has been no physical proof that kids are buried there, but some would have been First Nations kids in Cameron's experiments between 1953 and 1964. Others came from broken homes or were orphans. Obviously, they're not laid out to attract attention, but we think 17 to 25 children were buried there. Officially, though, it never happened. Many, many records were destroyed, however, and McGill has been very busy hiding the evidence and making sure witnesses and survivors remain silent. Whether or not these are just the ramblings of an Allen Memorial Institute survivor, or if there are indeed children buried down there, is open to speculation. In Brenda Knorr's article, Location of Mass Graves of Residential School Children Revealed, Independent Tribunal Established, in the Atlantic Free Press, 2006, she provides a list of hidden cemeteries across Canada where First Nations children who died in residential schools were secretly interred. The residential schools were designed to carry out cultural genocide against First Nations people. By stripping parents of their children, Canadian government authorities and religious officials forced the children to abandon their native languages and cultures to embrace austere Christian values. The death rate of children in some institutions was as high as 60%. Based on eyewitness accounts from survivors of these horrible institutions, the secret burial grounds are catalogued in Hidden from History, the Canadian Holocaust, 2nd edition, 2005, by Kevin Annett. Needless to say, the following information appears on the list of hidden cemeteries. Montreal, Allen Memorial Institute, McGill University, still in operation since opening in 1940, MK Ultra Experimental Center, mass grave of children killed there north of building on southern slopes of Mount Royal behind Stonewall. Over the years, there have been many conversations in hushed tones as to why the government is not investigating the situation. There can be no doubt that the Allen Memorial Institute's deranged experiments have also influenced fertile imaginations. The Manchurian Candidate, a novel by Richard Condon, was inspired by the experiments and first published in 1959. It is a political thriller about the son of a prominent American political family who is brainwashed into being an unwitting assassin for a communist conspiracy. The novel has been adapted twice into a future film in 1962 and again in 2004. The 1962 version is faithful to the book and stars crooner Frank Sinatra. To this day, the topic is still discussed in news and on social media. This is what we'd absolutely call an active story. In fact, it may be as active as it ever has been now. As of November 2022, McGill University said it would begin discussions with an Indigenous group that had raised concerns about unmarked graves after a court ruled that excavation work on a university expansion project would cause irreparable harm. Justice Gregory Moore has since ordered a halt to any excavation at the site until discussions can be held to develop an archaeological plan to search for graves. Rightfully so. Whether or not there is actually a hidden cemetery on the mountain site is still unknown at this time. Only one thing is certain. Until someone goes down there with a shovel or a spade and starts digging, this is one mystery that will remain unsolved. Are you a Montreal resident or perhaps a tourist who's had a strange experience at or around the Allen Institute? As always, we want to hear your theories and stories regarding what's going on here. Thank you so much for stopping by. If it's your first video, we do hope you'll stick around for the next one. We post videos in both French and English every Saturday. If you'd like to learn more about the organization founded by the talented Donovan King, it's all listed in the description down below, along with links to purchase tickets to in-person haunted storytelling tours. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We'll have a new video out for you next Saturday, but until then, stay spooky.